Sir John Ribot made a cardinal. Forum to promote children's rights launched. And Korea DPR confident in Group A. This is National MTV News with Mirba Tolo. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for Sunday's news. We begin our bulletin with some history being made in the Catholic Church in Papua New Guinea. PNG now has a new cardinal. He is Sir John Ribat. Sir John Ribat and 16 others today became cardinals during the public consistory for the creation of new cardinals by Pope Francis in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. The consistory also marks the closing of the Jubilee Year of Mercy. Sir John is the first cardinal of Papua New Guinea who joined the 16 others and earlier accompanied Pope Francis where they visited his predecessor, Benedict. They were also greeted by visitors and friends. A welcome ceremony is planned for the new cardinal's return from the Vatican. MTV News will bring you more stories on this topic in our next bulletin. The Religion, Youth and Community Development Department today launched the biannual Children's Forum with the aim to promote children's rights in Papua New Guinea. It comes after the National Parliament passed the Yumi Lookout in Pikinini Act last year. The Act calls for a biannual forum where all children are given the opportunity to express their concerns. ...to contribute to the development of local and national policies. The launch of the Children's Biannual Forum coincides with UNICEF's 70th anniversary and the International Children's Day celebrations in Port Mosby. Minister responsible for Youth, Religion and Community Development, Delilah Gore, says the forum will give children the opportunity to speak freely and allow children to contribute to nation building. Have that forum. We bring all the children from throughout the country to have that forum because we want to hear children speak. And many times we don't listen to children. 20th of November every year marks the International Children's Day. For Papua New Guinea, children make up a larger percentage of the total population. However, their concerns are often overlooked by adults because traditionally our culture does not allow children to be part of decision making. Realizing this, the government has passed the Yumi Lookout in Pikinini Act to protect and encourage children to speak openly about issues affecting them. Now they're hearing a lot about gender-based violence against their mothers, against their uh, sisters, against their daughters, against their sons, but they're not discussing it themselves as children. How do they, how does it affect them? And so these are important issues that adults and parents we take for granted. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. The Emmanuel Lutheran Elementary School in Port Mosby has launched its 10-year strategic plan for the years 2017 to 2027. This follows a strategic workshop the school held in June, which identified the three key areas within the strategic plan. The launch of the strategic plan comes 16 years after the school was established in the year 2000. The three key areas include the relocation of the school, proper training for elementary teachers and the effective management of the school. These objectives were identified under the school's action plans and are targeted to improving the quality of education it provides to elementary students. And strengths that we have. And we came up with three key strategic priorities. Number one is the school relocation. Due to increasing the number of enrollments, as you can see, we have a very small space. This is our key priority. We need to relocate to the new school ground. Early child learning is an important part of child development. Thus, the education department is looking into providing proper training for elementary teachers. For this school, it has graduated over 7,000 grade 2 students since its establishment. In 2016, it registered over 300 students. Michael Mera from the Education Department says the objectives of the strategic plan are in line with the department's objective for 2017. 
Takla Gunga, National MTV News. The National Health Department in 2017 will create a budget line for the Arwa School of Nursing in the autonomous region of Bougainville. Health Secretary Pasco Kase says the department will meet the budget in the normal budget process. The Health Secretary's announcement follows the certification of the Arwa School of Nursing to an academic institution. This is part of the National Health Department's policies and strategies to open some of the closed schools because nursing services is a challenge. And Arawa School of Nursing is one of those schools that was uh, very viable and very efficient in the, in the early days. But due to the crisis, it was closed. So they have now given their green light for the school to, to fully operation, op oper uh, become operational. The Health Secretary thanked the political support from the Bougainville Regional MP and Bougainville Affairs Minister Joe Lera. Kind enough to put in the, uh, the seed money to get it going. But in the long run, the National Department of Health will have to uh, uh, meet the budgets in the normal budget process. Early this month, the Arwa School of Nursing was awarded a certification of compliance, which permits students to do their clinical training in health facilities throughout the autonomous region. Director Selin Tusala says the accreditation also approves 40 new intakes for next year, recognized by the PNG Nursing Council and the National Health Department. She said the award of the provisional accreditation is a milestone achievement for Bougainville. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. National Health Department warns health support staff that and more stories when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. A tribunal has been established by the Labor and Industrial Relations Department to look into arbitration and negotiations for the health support staff. This is supported by the Personal Management Department. Health Secretary Pasco Kase says the National Health Department is concerned and has warned all health support staff not to conduct any strike action while negotiations are taking place. Health Secretary Pasco Kase has met with the Chief Secretary to the government and secretaries of the departments of personal management and labor and industrial relations and head of industrial relations to look into health support staff demands. We recognize that there is a process that has already begun, so we will respect that our process to take its course, and that's the uh, arbitration and negotiation. So. Uh, the Department of Labor and Employment is now taking charge of that, together supported by the uh, Department of Personal Management. At the moment, there is no strike action. All health support staff have been advised to continue with normal duties because disciplinary actions will be executed for those who fail to comply by these directions. That there is no strike action. If people are intending to do that or absented themselves from work, they are asking for trouble that they must remain at work until uh, if there was a strike action, it will be announced properly. But at the moment, there is no strike action. Mr. Kassis said there were no approval given for any strike action, but for the secret ballot to be conducted. Kassis says the secret ballot was to pave the way for negotiations. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. On a related note, the health secretary says that the Laloki Psychiatric Hospital is operating without a board to oversee operations. This came to light when MTV News queried if there was a board in place to monitor and control issues surrounding its operations. And uh, I see that the, the hospital management operates a budget. They have a budget. They are accountable for their own budget. They have a CEO. And when things are good, they, they just quietly do their business. When things get out of hand go bad, they start making noise and then blaming the health department as though the health department run the, the hospital. So that's something that I find. So I would want to have a board in place so they can take control of this uh, uh, very important state institution. The Papua New Guinea Defence Force Support Battalion celebrated its 8th anniversary with a parade at Mari Barracks in Port Moresby recently. PNGDF Commander Gilbert Torpo and FSB Commanding Officer Lieutenant Colonel Kingsley Wawada were present to witness this parade. 
The first support battalion 8th anniversary parade was held on Friday. The first ceremony began back in the 16th century where the night guards of the British Empire returned from battle to safety after sunset. Embracing this military tradition, the FSB conducted a parade to signify its new name, Force Support Battalion, which was formally announced by NCD Governor Poes Pakok in 2008. The parade consists of guards by PNGDF Ceremonial Company and the Force Support Company. PNGDF Commander Gilbert Toropo inspected the parade. Commander Toropo, while addressing the parade, urged soldiers to strive given the limited resources. At our sharp end, the operational units, 1st and 2nd Battalion, Engineer Battalion, and the maritime element and air force element to continue to get the support that is needed from force support battalion. And you play that very important and significant role in ensuring that our sharpen delivers the outcome as mandated by our constitution. And our first and foremost important responsibility is to provide sovereignty protection to our great country. He maintained that FSBs are custodians of Mari barracks and must uphold military ethics at all times. Hey! Eric Aruma, National MTV News. And that ends our new segment. Jeremy Mogi will bring us some sporting updates. Jeremy. Thanks, Mariba. Chukai Sports is next. We'll bring you more FIFA updates and others right after these short messages. Tukai Sports. We begin with uh, Rugby League in Tukai Sports. Now, a few former players have been named in the SPPNG Hunters Train On Squad. Former captain Israel Eliab is one of the players who has been named in the 50-man train on squad for the upcoming season in the Queensland Interest Israel Super Cup. Israel played in England for a year with the London Broncos and is back with the squad. Also named in the squad is Willie Minoga, who played a season with the Townsville Blackhawks. Stanton Albert with the New South Wales Penrith Panthers team has been recalled into the train on squad after his contract was not renewed. Lace Next Tigers duo David Loco and Noel Joel were included following an impressive season. Wellington Albert has also been included in the train on squad after being released by the Penrith Panthers. The 21 current Hunters players from the 26-man squad of 2016 vie for his spot in the final 30-man squad. Three current players will play overseas next season. They are Justin Olam who will join the Melbourne Storm, Thompson Tete with the Radcliffe Dolphins and Timothy Lomai who will play with Burley Bears, while Atebina Wabo and Adam Korave have been omitted. 17 players from the Intercity Cup competition and one from the Southern Confederate have been named in the train on squad. SP Hunters coach Michael Marum says the squad will assemble in Port Mosby on December 4, 2016 to start a grueling pre-season training program for three weeks. The first week, starting on December 4, will be in Port Mosby, followed by another week at the LNG sites at Hydes. The final week of training will be held in Goroka. The camps end on December 24, 2016, and the players will travel home to spend Christmas with their families. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. We now cross to Jeremy Mogi for updates from the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. Jeremy. Thanks, Miriba. In Group A, Korea DPR have already booked their spot in the quarterfinals, while a winner-takes-all clash between Brazil and Sweden tonight at the PNG Football Stadium will determine which side joins them. Sweden coach Balin K says his team is more confident going into this game against Brazil, which will be a decisive match, but his team have a good chance of winning it. Korea DPR have qualified for the quarterfinals after winning both matches so far, while host Papua New Guinea have been eliminated after two losses. The second spot in the last eight will be decided tonight by either one of Brazil or Sweden in what is effectively a knockout fixture. Both sides are equal with three points each on the board. But the South Americans have the upper hand 
boasting a superior goal difference, meaning they would progress to the quarterfinal if they draw the game with Sweden. And Brazil coming close with a glance header from Lai Shirley. Fans are in for a treat. This match should be entertaining as it features the competition's two best attacking sides. Brazil has scored a tournament high of 11 goals, while Sweden boasts 36 attempts on goal. All eyes will be on the team's most flamboyant forward players, the Swedish lone striker Stina Blackstinius, who scored four times against Papua New Guinea, will be hopeful of adding to their tally. Started to make everybody feel a sense of danger. Meanwhile, Brazil will turn to duo Gabi Nunes and Brenna, who each have three goals apiece, uh, for attack and inspiration as shown in their previous encounters. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. Coming up after the news will be the build-up to the Papua New Guinea versus Korea DPR match at 7 p.m. Now that's it from me. It's back to Mary Butulo with the rest of the bulletin. Thank you, Jeremy. Now after the break, we take a look at the weather forecast in the four regions for the next 24 hours. Stay with us for the details. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Now here's a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. First of all, in the southern region, Port Moresby, fine although cloudy at times. Fine weather in Daru, Alotau and Popandeta. Fine although patches of cloud in Kerama. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield with doing with Dulux.